there's a new documentary out called The Greatest Night in Pop. And uh, there's a. I'll ask you a trivia question now. This is kind of interesting to me. Uh, neither Prince or Madonna were part of We Are the World. Uh, they, neither one of them were there, even though they were big stars, especially Prince. And, well, and Madonna. This is mm-hmm. 1984. So your trivia question is, and it's going to be, uh, this is pretty tough. Who did they get instead of Prince to sing the solo part? Who did they get instead of Madonna to sing the solo part? Mm. Can you guess which I one? I think I know the answer to the Prince one. Okay, who is it? I think I read that it was a very terrified Huey Lewis. That is correct. <laughs> it is a terrified <laughs> Huey Lewis oh, who didn't God. want to be in the solo part. Right? Oh. But he was pretty, they were pretty big men, weren't they? Huey Lewis. Oh, yeah. 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 In the oh, 80, yeah. 84, yeah. Uh, Prince was asked by his singer and drummer protege, Sheila E., who was invited by Lionel Richie. Uh, but Prince said, I'll only do it if I can record a guitar solo in a room all by myself, sort of like Michael Jackson did. You know, my, Jackson's by himself. He recorded for his solo. Yeah. He's in the chorus mm-hmm. with everybody, but he recorded his solo line, I guess, by himself. Prince wanted to do all of it by himself. He didn't want to be a part of the big group. So Sheila E. says, I knew he wasn't going to come if there were so many people because he didn't like being around big, larger groups of people like that. I'm not standing next to Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Aykroyd. I hope they. I hope this this special, whatever it is, yeah. digs in. Yeah, I do too. I want to see that a documentary. It's on Netflix right now. And it seems like Quincy Jones wanted it to be a you know everybody's a team player here. Absolutely. Yeah, that's where the that's where the famous sign mm-hmm. "Check Your Egos at the Door" went up. Exactly. That's where it came from. Is that the very first time that was first used? time I ever heard it? I mean, they said mm-hmm. that when you walk in the studio, check your ego at the door. So as Chris Tim stated, Huey Lewis. I'm not standing next to Kenny Loggins. <laughs> Did he? That's a danger okay. zone. So uh, <laughs> Huey Lewis did the part that was meant for Prince. Now, here's the thing about Madonna. She was at the beginning of her career, but had just come out with Like a Virgin and was a huge star. That was 84? That was 84. Or, like a Virgin had beca- had, was a hit. I thought that was later. Okay. Um, it's, it's, uh, after she released a 1983 self-titled debut and 1984's block borderline like lucky a, star. And then Like a Virgin okay. after that. Uh, she was passed over. Uh, Ken Cragen, who was the manager for Lionel Richie, wanted, Cragen wanted Madonna, or excuse me, wanted the other singer, Harriet Sternberg, who is a, a producer in it as well, said she wanted Madonna, but he won out. This guy named Ken Cragen, who was Richie's manager, wanted the other singer, who was also very well established, and that's who did the solo part. Do you want to guess who that is? I don't think it's Kim Carnes. It's the only one I can think of. It's not, not Diana Ross. No. She would she would take a back seat to nobody. Right, yeah. If you wanted that younger flavor at that time, Cindy Lauper. That's it. Cindy Lauper. So Lauper. Mad- Madonna was gonna do Lauper's part. But Lauper's part is very iconic from remember she was like, Wow, 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 wow. wow. So in fact, Huey Lewis and Cindy Lauper are back to back. It was supposed to be or could have been Prince and Madonna. But if you check Gives me chills to this day. I love it. And I think I read that um, they had to redo Cindy's lines multiple times because her jewelry That's right. Kept, was, uh, was clicking on the microphone. <laughs> yeah. All her necklaces, yeah. Yeah. Br- bracelets, bracelets were hot. Do you think you. Quincy Jones couldn't have said, take, take, take the bracelets off? <laughs> I think Prince played this Damn just it, right. You do? You don't think I Prince think wanted Prince, No. He was standing there next to Cl- Clack and Cindy Lauper. <laughs> <laughs> He would have been. Leave that to Huey Lewis. Let what time play. of year was the... Was the uh, right after the Grammys. So it's, it's actually the American Music Awards. I okay. think we were in error. I, I think we all thought Grammys, but it's the American Music Awards. So when is it? Early in the year. It's right? usually early. January. Because it came out with it in April. Because Purple Rain would have been later. Okay. In later in 84. 84. Right. But he was still a really big oh, star. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So do you think the song would have been better? It would have been different with Madonna and Prince. Yeah. You know, you can't imagine it any other way, but I bet if you had done it with those two, you'd still say, yeah. I can't imagine mm-hmm. it any other way. Yeah, I think it still would have been great. Yeah. I mean, that, would Madonna have sang that? I don't that think so. Line? It, would have, it would have been a different arrangement. Yeah. I don't think she would have gone, meh, meh, meh. I don't, I don't think, think she would have gone that high. I don't either. She I, didn't have that voice then either. I mean, she no. was, she's, Madonna's voice has improved yeah. over the last 40 years, but, you know, mm-hmm. Cindy something, had range. Yeah. Let me ask Dave that you may not know because you're an old, but let me ask you this. <laughs> let me. <laughs> Do you? Th- Here's another thing that's come out of that documentary on Netflix about We Are the World. 
Lionel Richie says he don't he doesn't think you can do it today because everybody or many in that ensemble they had back then had separate voices. Bob Dylan, you knew it was Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, Cindy Lauper, you knew that iconic voice. Today they all sound the same. Think it's true? Or is, um, he, or is he just being an old? Chris Tim says he's just being an old. I think he's probably just being an old. I, I think voices are voices yeah. over even over time. Yeah. What there isn't is radio for a lot of these people. They're just all over the place. Everybody, there's so many different yeah. segments and genres uh, and true. places to yeah. get music. It's yeah. hard to get everybody. But, I mean, there's a few. There's the Taylors and the... Well, but uh, wait a minute now. These are probably 40 of the biggest stars or more in of, of that era, of mm-hmm. that time. I think you could come up with a list of 40 that would fit the bill today, don't you think? Probably. So, you know, starting with your Taylors and Beyonce. How old? Do you go all the way? Like, I think all like the way. Because, I mean, they Kenny Rogers, Ray Charles, and Willie yeah. Nelson, yeah. and Harry Belafonte. Yeah, that's right. So you they could probably older. come up with 40. I, think I mean, you if, you, if you can get the Mick Jaggers to come out. And well, he's 80. Billy Joel. Yeah. So how old was Belafonte then? was probably in his, what, 60s? Yeah, probably. Yeah. No, he less because he just yeah. died in his 90s, and this was 40 years ago. Yeah. You know, so he, was in, he was in his 50s. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you thought of him as old. Yeah. Well. Be- because he's around all those young people. Yeah. I'm watching that darn thing. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I'm making a vow for that. I just told Chris Tim, I'm watching uh, more TV this year than ever before. He did. He, that was his pledge. I said it. I said it. And uh, Chris Tim said, Will you share what you learn and your new programs with Biggie because he's done so much for you? And I said, No, I'll keep it to myself. I'll keep it. That's all Biggie does is, is say, give. You, I think you might like this. Yep, Biggie just... is like your walking mm-hmm. Netflix algorithm. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> because you mm-hmm. like this, you might like this. He does. He just gives to me all the time. And what do I do? Besmirch him, hate watch it. I've told you that when you got to watch is the new season of Fargo. I know. I'm going to that next. It's tremendous. I'm going to it. I'm doing it next. You ain't Fargo. And I'm Fargo. <laughs> it is a tremendous. <laughs> season five. Did you just, just Fargo? Up. I'm Fargo. Tremendous. I Fargo all the time. You ain't go Fargo. You I ain't try, go True Detective. Fargo. I try to cover it up, but I Fargo a lot. I you know, go I on do. Fargo. I do. Season one of Fargo was great. Yep. Then I skipped the next three. Me too. And for some, somebody told me this season of Fargo, you got to watch. No. It's great. I I'll take you up on it. I will watch Fargo. I have one more question. I think it's intriguing that if you would, if you did forty people from today, today was Kenny Rogers the only real country person that was on there? Country singer, so they had to speak. Willie, Willie Nelson, Willie. Anybody? But both of those had crossed over a little. Ray Charles slightly. had Ray Charles done. He did country, didn't he? For sure. Yeah. And, and so him, I guess you could say. And yeah. I bet Ray Charles was the oldest person in the room, uh, singing. Probably. Would you oh. have to include more country today? I don't think so. I think there are enough. I bet enough I could, rock and rollers I, I think, and yeah, pop and rock. pops. I feel like you could come up with K pop um, forty. I don't know K pop. You know, if it was if it was created today mm-hmm. with the, the blueprint of most of today's pop music, there'd be a rap in the middle, which you there t- would, which yeah. you would hate. I'd get rid of that. That'd be Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, somebody's got to get somebody's got to get feet. But I would. Yeah. Oh, you do a feet. Oh, Chris. It. It's feet everybody. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, I let's, uh, and and I think you'd have somebody like Janet Jackson and Mariah Carey as the older artists. Yeah, mm-hmm. don't you think? Yeah, they yeah. could be the old guard, right? And and I because you had Ray Charles in their own Ray sound booths. Yeah, <laughs> which one would demand their Taylor being her own sound? Janet booth. and well, yeah, she would demand that as well. Uh, Sean, you're talking about We Are the World. There's a documentary on Netflix. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I was listening to an interview with uh, Huey Lewis, and he was talking about he had a lot of conversations with Paul Simon, and he said Paul Simon told him that you know if a bomb fell on this building tonight, John Denver will be right back on top. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. I'll give you. 